Jesus. Amen. The power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. When we talk about power, we talk about the ability, its potential, what it can do. So today we'll be looking at what the blood can do, the blood of Jesus can do for us. And as we have learned today of mercy, this is another extension of God's mercy to us by giving us his blood. But we'll be looking at what this mercy can, should do for us after it has been given to us. The blood was shed on Calvary. We all know the story how Jesus came and died. And from Genesis to Revelation, we've been talking about the blood, the blood. How sacrifices have been made. How God commanded the children of Israel to make different types of sacrifices. For the importance of what? They were pointing to one person that was yet to come. And it was Jesus Christ. And we thank God very much that he came and died for our sins. In Romans, if we read Romans chapter 5 verse 14. In the few minutes we have, let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 14. It says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of, Ad uh, of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Here, the scripture is telling us that from the beginning, we die. But we thank God that today the sting of death can be taken away. The sting, the sting of death is sin. And that's what the blood of Jesus came to do, came to wash it away. If we read Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Hebrews 9, 22 says, and almost all things are by the law paid with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So without the blood, we cannot be forgiven our sins. This chapter, if we forget anything and everything today, we should remember that without the blood, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. We'll look into what this means. And also when we look at Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. So we get reconciliation. What does reconciliation mean? It means when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and as we read the scripture, ever since then, sin has been reigning in our mortal body. And Jesus Christ, to reconcile us, came and died for us, that we can be reconciled back to God again. This is the importance of the blood of Jesus. And we should never forget it. And when we look at Isaiah, Isaiah 53, he give us a summary, an overview of everything that the blood uh, should do for us. Isaiah 53, verse, I'll read 5 to 8. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Seven says he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shearers is done, so he opened not his mouth. Eight and the last, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare in his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was his strength. 
So here, this gives us a summary of the importance of the blood of Jesus. The first summary is that he was wounded for our transgressions. For our sin, he died. For our sin, he was beaten. They spat on him. They beat him with the rocks that had like blades on it. And blood was gushing out. They took him to the cross and nailed him there from his hands and from his feet and from his side. After the piercing, blood was flowing out just for you and me, just to reconcile you and me back to God because of the sin that we were born with and the ones we have committed. So it, the blood is very, very important. In Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 4, Leviticus chapter 4, it was described how the animals were to be killed, the type of animals who were to, be, who were to make this type of uh, sacrifices, how it was supposed to be carried out. Let me read a bit, let's read a bit from what the Bible says. Leviticus chapter 4, let's read 27 to 30. 27. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he does what so against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and to be guilty. So here the Bible is, the, it was being explained to them, then by Moses to the people of, to the children of Israel, that if anyone they have seen, even of the common people, we can read even for the priest in this uh, passage, but let's look at the one for the common people. And then 28, or if, or if this sin, or if his sin which he has seen come to his knowledge. So if you have come to the realization that you have sinned, whether by ignorance or anything that you have done against the commandment of God, what should you do in the Old Testament? Then you should bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without a blemish for his sin which he had committed. 29. And he shall slay, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the, of the sin offering and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. 30. And the priest shall take the blood thereof with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar to burn it, to, oh, sorry, to, to burn up of burnt offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. So we see how these people should approach the priest in those that was in the Old Testament. They should bring an offering, come to the priest. The priest should kill him, touch the blood, uh, put their hand on the offering and say whatever they committed. And after the priest will kill this uh, animal, the blood will be put on the altar. And this was the way they were being forgiven, but pointing, because we'll read later that these animals could not save them, could not save them, wash their with their sin. But this was a way that they were pointing to Jesus Christ, the yet to come savior of humanity. And Jesus has come. So the importance of the blood, we also see it in, uh, in Egypt, when the children of Israel were to come out from Egypt on that night, they killed the animal again, put the blood on the lintels of the inside doors of their, of their doors. And, this, and what did Jesus said there, God told them, when I see the blood, I will pass over it. So another importance of the blood is not just for giving, not just to be washed, it's for also protection. Your sins can be washed away. It was good for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is laid upon him. And we have checked that also our healing is from his blood. And now our protection also. We can find protection in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of 
bullocks and of bull should take away sins. There's the scripture telling us that in those days it was just a it was just used to point to Jesus Christ. This blood, the animal they were killing, could not wash away their sins, but they were pointing to Jesus Christ, the one that was yet to come. And we thank God that Jesus has come. Jesus is here and that to bless us. The blood, the importance of the blood, we see again in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, let's read verse 19. Chapter 10, verse 19. It says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. If we need the salvation, the sanctification, the baptism, to enter into the holiest, we need the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is very, very important. And if you read uh, Hebrews chapter 9, I would have loved us to read from verse 11 to even 22 or 23 there. But we just read a few. Hebrews chapter 9, let's read verse 14. How much more then the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The blood helps us with our fellowship with God. Because, as I said before, without the blood, we could not be reconciled to God. We could not have fellowship with God. But through the blood of Jesus, we all now, once we plead the blood, it washes our sins away, we can now have access to God and be able to communicate with God. Is this not wonderful? This is wonderful. So the blood is very, very important. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, in whom we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. As I said from the beginning, God is extending mercy to us by giving us his blood again, the blood of Jesus Christ. And this blood is to wash away our sins. We can get forgiveness of our sin through the blood of Jesus. First Peter, First Peter chapter 1. Verse 18 to 19. <coughs> For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, 19, but with the precious blood of, of, of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. We are redeemed by the precious blood blood of Jesus Christ that has no blemish and without spot. So my brother, my sister, as we said before, death, sin has been reigning since the beginning. All we like sheep have gone astray. We were born in iniquity. The only way for us to be reconciled back to God is through the blood of Jesus. And in Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 17, we read the 19. Romans 5, verse 17 to 19. It says, For if by one man's offense death, death reigned by one, how much they which, which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, which reign in, in life by one Jesus Christ. Nine, uh, 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. 
this justification is by Jesus Christ. Amen. 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus, we can be made righteous again. Adam and Eve, they sinned, and their sin was passed on from generation until today. But by the obedience and by the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed, we also can now be forgiven. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 say, as we have said, yeah. almost all things by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. There's no remission. We cannot be forgiven our sin without Jesus coming to die for us. But Jesus has come. He has died on the cross. And we are grateful. I'm sure you are grateful that he came and suffered and went through all this pain for you and for me. That by the blood of Jesus Christ, we can be reconciled back to God again. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. It is time for us to pray. Amen. And we have seen the importance of the blood of Jesus. Jesus has died for you and for me. Will you come and plead the blood of Jesus for the remission of your sins? Will you come? My brother, my sister, come. Come to the altar. Come and pray. Jesus has died already. Come and pray. And God will bless you. You will save your soul.